Welcome to another speaker's tip. I'm continuing my series of tips on how to use Zoom, and that is in response to the emails I've been getting from those of you listening to these. And I would encourage anybody listening to this, if there's a topic you want me to take up, that helps me a lot, is to send me an email and say, I'd like for you to talk about this specific topic. And so I make sure I'm getting relevant information back to you, and I'm not just doing tips that are of no interest to anybody. Okay, today I wanna to talk about using Zoom and specifically just using screen share. Because quite often we have a PowerPoint or we have a video or some audio component that we wanna share while we have the group on Zoom. And this is something we need to become familiar with. It took me a little while to figure out how to use screen share and how to actually use it effectively. A couple points I wanna point out to you is that if by chance, you're going to be playing in a video on screen share, you need to activate the audio component that allows the audio to come through your computer. Otherwise, it's just gonna play in your computer and it won't go on out to Zoom. And what you can do is go into audio settings and there's, you'll find the button in that area uh, to maybe basically share the audio. And one of the things I'm just gonna recommend, I'm not gonna spend an hour here walking through Zoom and showing you all the drop down when, when drop down windows and all the buttons you can push. You need to do that on your own. You need to spend some time going through Zoom and looking at it, clicking on the different buttons, figuring out what it does. If you have to go to YouTube and say how to or what is this and find out what it is. That's the same thing I had to do. So, you know, put on your your, your, your big person pants and, and figure it out for yourself. But let's look at a couple of items on sharing a screen. I'm gonna share a screen with you right now. And so what we see is that I share the screen and I'm reduced now to a small little window up in the side and you see my slide. This is fine. One of the things I recommend though, is that you need to become very familiar and very comfortable with coming in and out of Zoom so that when you're not talking about your slide, you come back and have full screen talking to your audience. And this is the same thing that works with PowerPoint in real live speaking, is the fact that you are the message, you are the source of your communication, not your PowerPoint. And when you're in a situation, you're looking at a screen and a speaker's talking to you, and this is what you see, you're standing there staring at, you know, 90% of this real estate is the slide. And the speaker is just up in the corner and he may have, be, may have come off the slide. They may be talking about something completely different. They may have already made the point on the slide and now they're expanding on that. You've got the message on the slide. You don't need that visual anymore. The speaker doesn't need you to be seeing the visual. So the speaker, as the speaker, you should come out of your screen share and come back and talk to the audience. It's, it's really quite that simple. Get familiar with zipping in and out of, of slide share so that you maintain your relationship and you maintain the predominant source of the message with your, with your audience. And another component on that, there's, there's different features in Zoom. You can actually, there's a feature that allows you to put the slide as a virtual background behind you. And that works really well, as long as you're not blocking a lot of the words that are on the slide. You have to put the words up here in the corner or something. It's a nice feature. And I'm not sure if it's available on all the different versions or the paid versions. Uh, again, that's something you're gonna have to find out. That is a feature. There are some other features that, excuse me, there are some other programs or applications that you can add to Zoom. As an example, would, would put a border around you and you could have your name and yeah, e website address, email address, phone number right on the bottom or, or it could position you in some way. There's a lot of other apps that you can, you can bring into Zoom to enhance the presentation. I'm not gonna get into that in detail right now. That's about as far as I'm gonna go into it. I will do another tip on some of the apps and where you can find them. The main thing I wanna leave you with today is if you're using slides, you know, one of the bad habits I see over and over and over again in Zoom presentations is that some speaker is talking and they come to their slide. And again, here they are up in the little corner of the room and you're looking at that slide and they'll spend seven, eight, nine minutes. They'll take Q&A with the slide on. And I just wanna let you know, it's very easy to do. I have gotten caught in this too, because as I'm speaking, 
as I'm as I'm speaking, I am just looking at the audience. I forget that I've got my PowerPoint up. So you have to remain in in, in the present, <laughs> cognizant of where you are, what's going on. Uh, on it. So the simplicity of the tip is have your PowerPoint up when you need the slides. Come out of screen share when you don't. You know, on another point, I recommend that when you start a speech, you start it live and then you go into screen share. You don't start your speech with your PowerPoint slide up. Just like, again, just like when you're speaking in person with people, you want to make the impact on the audience and then the slides are a speaker's aid. They're a speaking aid that is not, the slides are not the message, you are the message. So start your speech with you being live, then go into screen share, come out of screen share when you don't need to be on that slide anymore and end your speech live looking at the audience. Okay, that's the tip for today. I'll see you next week.